right, a very good morning to you and welcome to the platform, the pinnacle of all the discussion. It is 44 days, 21 hours, 54 minutes and 13 seconds to the 2023 general election. Well, the presidential and national assembly election, which holds next month, 25th February precisely, has sent candidates up in their games to ensure no stone is left untorned towards achieving victory during the contest. Many promises keep coming up to convince the electorate to do the needful of voting them as their preferred candidate. However, as we march on to the election, we will keep interfacing with the candidates on your behalf to get the right message and ensure they are held accountable if elected. On the platform this morning, Chief Chuku Wachuku, the YPP senatorial candidate for Abia Central Senatorial Zone, is making a return on the platform what is resolved to keep talking to you, the electorate, ahead of the election. Welcome. My name is Ginika Aloha. All right, uh, welcome back to the program. This is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. Before we enter that break, I told you that my guest is Chief Chuku Wachuku, the Young Progressives Party Senatorial Candidate for Abia Central Senatorial Zone, a former DG, National Directorate of Employment, uh, and so many other uh, positions he has held in the past. It is my pleasure to welcome you, Chief Chukuwachuku, to the studios of Flu 94.9 FM. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, maybe let's start uh, with the issue of interaction. I'm sure you've been going around uh, your constituency trying to talk to the people. Uh, tell us, how has it been so far with the message you carry along? Uh, how, how the, the people, how are they receiving the message so far? Well, first of all, I'd like to wish everybody in Abbey State and especially uh, my good people in Abbey Central a uh, very happy new year. And I pray to God that uh, this year will bring uh, good health and uh, prosperity to each and everybody. The idea of representation is to ensure that we better your lives. Uh, we have specific um, programs and policies. Our campaign is policy-driven mm. and is centered on human development, family economic program, uh, jobs, sustainable jobs for all, not rise. I was talking about wealth creation and not gifts. I was talking specifically about transfer of power to the next generation. So when you have such messages, of course people will receive you, you know, resoundingly because it's something totally different from the previous uh, campaign uh, uh, platforms that people say. Uh, for me and who I am, I say what I mean, and I do what I say. Uh, I think for the last 23 years, people have been making promises, and uh, they don't get back to these people, you know, until uh, maybe six months to the next general elections. I was speaking to uh, some people this morning, and I said, look at your lives for the last 23 years, for the last uh, so many election cycles. I'm going to ask all of you, in Abia State, in Abia Central, is your life any better now than four years ago? If the answer is uh, no, uh, then it's time to try a new system, a system of wealth creation, family economic program for you and your families, and not uh, KK. Uh, KK empowerment is not empowerment. Uh, good and sustainable jobs to eradicate poverty, and create uh, jobs for people. There's so many young people who've been out of college or universities for, for so many years and no jobs. And I'm saying that you can actually be job creators. You become an entrepreneur. And you talk about the experience that I have. I introduced entrepreneurship development in Nigeria. I introduced uh, uh, skills acquisition because for you to be employable, you have to have some skill set. And I've been an issue. I introduce uh, wealth creation. When I say I, I mean myself and my colleagues at the National Directorate for Employment. And I make bold statement that uh, 1994, when I exited the National Director of Employment as the Director General, unemployment rate 
was 3% compared to about 60% at this time. And this um, unemployment is so sectorial. Poverty is also sectorial. It's affecting mostly the youths and the women. Many people are out of school. Many people uh, turn to crime. Um, what you can know is that, you know, insecurity is directly linked to poverty. Poverty is linked to unemployment in Nigeria. And so when we talk about those things, now we'll come back and look at, for the last 23 years, how many people really uh, have been at the helm of affairs to, uh, you know, affect your lives. You can count them on your fingers, not more than five people in different constituencies. And I'm saying it's about time to stop serial contestants from leading you. I think uh, the Shakespeare or some Greeks a lot of philosopher said, if you do not contribute to the selection of those who rule, rule you, and you have nobody to blame when fools rule you. If you try the same for 23 years, then take a change. The best, the best, the worst thing can happen is you still do, you know, get into the same situation of poverty, unemployment, and misery. Mm -hmm. We can try a new system. And so that's what we're offering. But we must not begin to go down so that young people can take over. That's why I say power must be transferred to the next generation. Okay, let's talk about the experience you had as a former DG of National Directorate for Employment in the past. Um, with that experience, bringing it to bear, uh, the experience you've had so far, tell us, how are you going to address the issue of unemployment like you raise here, that is at about 60% uh, like we have all over the country right now. If eventually you get elected, how will you address that going by the fact that you've served in an agency of the federal government charged with the responsibility of addressing that, uh, that issue? It's actually very simple and very easy. Let me address the issue of uh, candidates who say that their responsibility is to make laws. Of course, that's a primary responsibility that you go there, but they forget that that position offers a platform to affect their lives. I mean, you have institutions like this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 like the central bank, uh, institutions like the bank of industry, the bank of agriculture, the Smeden, uh the raw material research and uh, uh, research and development council. These institutions offer, you know, uh, uh, finances which are called development finance, which are, which are single digit denominated. When I talk about family economic program, my particular program intends to have clusters, industrial clusters in every, of 500 people in every local government, 100 people in every ward. And so this thing, these people will be empowered to become the primary entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur is a business owner. And so if you take Guinea yourself now, mm -hmm. as I told you before, and you're part of that program, instead of working for flow, you're going to be an entrepreneur, an employer of labor, mm -hmm. and you employ four people, so you created five jobs. These people are earning wages. Okay, these are specific terms. All right. And they, so they create employment. When you create employment, these people earn wages. When they earn those wages, those wages will trigger, trigger their mind because they now have economic power to purchase. Now, when they purchase, it will trigger consequential supply. So if you want to buy Gary, you don't have the money to buy it. And now you have money to buy, you're going to buy Gary. That means that somebody who is producing Gary will sell it to you. That is supply demand and supply question that we're talking about. So you create a job. And there's a multiplicity of jobs created down the line because the person who is selling Gary now has money to go and barb his hair. You created a demand for the barber. Now barber now has money to go and mend his shoes. You created a job for him. So that is the way you create wealth. Ain't nobody going to ask you for money again because it's already economically empowered. And let me say something here. 
the National Assembly, because I'm sure one particular person who has the tendency to talk about how uh, uh, I speak English, I speak Ngwa very fluently. It is not my fault that he cannot speak English very well. And I mentioned that because before he calls, tell him that spoken language in the National Assembly is English. It is not Ongwa. It is not Iberi. It is not Isukweto. It is English. The medium of uh, 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 deliberations and international fora hmm. is English. It has nothing to do with my capacity and capability to deliver economic dividends. I should be asking our people who represented us, why is there such high unemployment? I'm not going to hide under the, the, the excuse that my duty is to make laws. That is shameful because you are in a position to make sure that the agencies, the development finance agencies, comply with their mandate. If they do not comply with their mandate, then I'm going to ask them why. Now, let me give them hope. Now, Central Bank of Nigeria has $250 billion available for agriculture. You can go ask them there for Uncle Boros program, for commercial agricultural loan scheme. Nisrael here has over $300 billion naira to spend. Uh, uh, Bank of Industry has over $500 billion naira to spend. These are all supposed to trigger employment creation through entrepreneurship development. And so as a senator, you have that platform to induce them to do the right thing. Now, you're asking about my experience. At the National Directorate for Employment, we figured that the skills acquisition was primary. And so we trained under me 100,000 youths. The youths talk about what have you done. I'm telling you what we've done, what we're going to do. 100,000 youths trained in, in skills acquisition, whether it's in fashion designing, whether it's in bakery, whether it's in uh, uh, barbering, whether it's in plumbing, whether it's air conditioning. Now, at the end of the training, we gave them loans to establish their own business. So you can imagine when you train 100,000 Nigerians, employing four extra people, you've created 500,000 jobs. Is that what you're going to do this time? I will do that and more. Now, my organization, I am the national president of Agricultural and Industrial Entrepreneurs of Nigeria. Okay. Okay. It is with that that we've signed a MOU with some federal government agencies to, to carry out what we call raw materials-based clusters initiative. That will mean that in every ward, we're going to engage 100 people, all these women, and all the youths go into farming, and every local government were going to in engage 500 people in clusters. Now let us say, let us say that a very important producing local government like uh, Ikuano, which is very rich in production of cassava, uh, cocoa, uh, what you may call it, uh, uh, what's, it uh, what's the other one they produce? Okay, let us even say cassava. Mm. Let us say 500 people in cluster produce five, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of cassava. It becomes a raw material for gary production. It becomes a raw material for starch. It becomes a raw material for ethanol. It becomes a raw material for cassava chips. And we have already signed a more use with off takers. Who would buy at farm gate? So whether I become senator or not, and from the look of things, I will, by the grace of God, I will be the next senator. Okay. But because I have the experience, I already have these things in place, 500 people in every local government in Nigeria will benefit from that because of my experience. Okay, you appear to have uh, experience. I don't you appear know, to. I have it. Experience, uh, what I'm talking about mm -hmm. in economy precisely yes, so am. let us talk about economy now okay. uh, right now nigeria is experiencing high exchange rate especially uh -huh. with uh -huh. our naira against other foreign currencies like dollar pounds uh -huh. and the rest of them uh -huh. what is responsible for this i've said that on on channel tv i've said that on ait mm -hmm. it's low production and productivity 
you have too much naira chasing too few dollars and we're import dependent on the th goods that we consume so if we produce the goods we consume mm -hmm. it will be less stress on export or import of for foreign exchange there will be no more if you're, if you're spending 500 billion mm -hmm. yearly to import things that you consume in Nigeria and you produce them in Nigeria then the stress on the Naira would, would go down. It's a simple macroeconomics or supply and demand metrics where you meet the point of equilibrium, the price must go down. Anytime the demand mm -hmm. is higher than the supply, the price shoots up. Anytime the supply is lower than the demand, okay, it goes down. Okay, at mean time the demand is lower than the supply, the price goes down. It's same the thing with the same with uh, the foreign currency. If we don't, if we have less demand, because we're not producing what we consume, through this unique method of uh, clusterization, we're going to create employment, which we are. When you import goods, you're creating employment for those foreign countries. But when you produce what you have in Nigeria, you are creating employment. And I've already explained to you now, when you create employment, it reduces poverty, it reduces stress, okay? And it's directly linked to insecurity. Insecurity will cease. And so that's what I know, I do what I know how to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not a politician as such, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, have, I am an expert, I'm a technocrat, and I'm very proud to be a technocrat. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the viability of that uh, dry port at Antigua. Antigua is your own place. Yes. Uh, that is Asia Langwa North. Well, when do you think, is it, will it be realistic in you know, establishing that port? And what will he address uh, specifically? Well, I'm glad you asked this question because it's part of my manifesto. I've told the people of Asia Langwa, if you haven't heard me, and you should hear me clearly now, that dry port has been on paper. For over 30 years, mm -hmm. it is a federal government initiative uh, conceived by Shippers Council. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to critically look at it, and make sure the dry port comes into place. They've gotten so many assigned different MOUs, but nothing has worked. And so when you have core investors from Abia Central, because they intend to put one major industry. Our local government in Abia Central. I intend to create what I call Abia Central Economic Zone. We have one major industry in every local government within that side. Now we have geometrics power, which I'm going to ensure that we give them all the leverage to support them, you know, to produce the light. Now you have power. Now we'll actually put together co investors. I mean, uh, uh, from Abia Center. Abia State is filled up with people who are legendarily rich on their own. We take them overseas, okay? We sign a JV, which is a joint venture with, in, in, with the investors here. Well, we take them overseas, and I hope they are listening. Yeah, what you? Now, when they take them overseas, we're going to meet with overseas, genuine overseas investors. But they are no longer going to be talking to individuals. They're going to be talking on a senatorial economic platform led by the senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So when we have an agreement on just not, not just the dry port, but other industries that will germinate growth and create employment, we will now sign JVs, okay, joint ventures with them. We'll now bring them back. The development finance institutions in Nigeria, those will now leverage on that JV will sign to release funds. So the uh, Ntega dry port will come to place. I am aware that there's a plan to bring uh, rail from One Port mm -hmm. to Mbasi. And then Duala, we are planning to have the, the road dualized from Mbasi to Ntega. So when those containers come in there, they will come through, through uh, Mbasi Station, which will be further developed, and then yeah. they're taken to the dry port. So our people do not need to 
the whole of the southeastern people do not need to go to a near. Okay? And that will create multiple employment opportunities. When we do that, that place, because we haven't really taken a government interest in it. Government does not, should not engage in business. But I will aggregate investors in Nigeria who would sign joint ventures or have a, what you call SPV, special purpose vehicle that will bind them together. You take this SPV, special public purpose vehicle, overseas. The ambassador there would now treat the, our special public purpose vehicle as platform of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, led by Fernet of the Federal Republic. They will take us more seriously because there's a fright of integrity. And so it, 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 it frightens people from FDI, which is foreign direct investment. But when they see that this is genuine, they will come. Okay, if you're just joining us, this is the and plan. By the way, uh, I'm aware that uh, the current senator representing Ibe Central, Ochendo, my good friend, has fought very hard to create, uh, to upgrade Abia State, Abia Polytechnic, Abba, into a federal polytechnic. I've said it before, and I hope Omar and not people are listening. I'm not going to compete with Ochendo. He's done very well. Whatever he stops will take it from there. So I'm going to take that polytechnic and do my best to convert it to a university okay. and bring it back to the central. You'll tell us more about that and how uh -huh. you're going to go about it. Well, if you're just joining us, this is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. And I've been speaking with the YPP senatorial candidate for Abia Central Senatorial Zone and former Director General, National Directorate for Employment, Chief Chuku Wachuku. We'll take a breather now. When we come back, there are other issues to talk about on the platform this morning. Stay with us. All right, uh, welcome back to the program. It's still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion, and my guest has been the YPP senatorial candidate for Abbey Central Senatorial Zone, Chief Chuku Wachuku. Welcome back to the program, Chief. Thank you. Now, let's, uh, you were actually making a point as to what uh, the current senator representing Abbey Central is doing, his effort at making sure the federal government comes in to take over the Abia Poli you talked about. Yes. Now, uh, by a few months from now, mm -hmm. he's going to exit the Red Chambers and uh, probably, mm -hmm. just like he said, think that by God's grace, uh, you will step in. Let's assume you become the senator representing Abia Central Senatorial Zone. What are you going to do to make sure that that particular dream is realized? Going by the fact that, of course, you need the backing of the state government to do this. No, we do well. Let me first uh, continue to congratulate the uh, current senator, Senator T. A. R. G. Uh, for doing a, a good job, you know. And I said, I will not be in competition with him, but I will continue from where he stopped. Important thing is, uh, he has his own legacy. I'll build mine, and I want to use this also opportunity to. Uh, ask all our candidates to be issue based I'm not attacking people you've never heard me attack anybody present your manifesto if they have any and I'll present mine let the people judge by what you're able to do but I was uh, interestingly listening to your jingle when you said after the promises and elections you get elected the real governance comes in. So on that basis, I will ask the electorate to ask yourselves, how has your life been last year? So that's the judgmental call you have to make. The people who have been representing you all this time, have they done a good job? Have they empowered your family to be able to afford to buy the things you need? Have they been able to send your kids to school? Okay, and so these are the judgments that you have, the judgment call you have to make for yourselves. I can't do that for you. I can only elucidate and enunciate my policies, which I've done, which is to create jobs, and to make sure the families are economically empowered, to be able to afford to buy whatever they can, and to and to create wealth for you, not not uh, gifts. And uh, I hear some people talk about I will partner with the youth. On what basis are you going to partner? What's, what's the actual thing you're going to do? I've told you how we're going to engage the youth. I've told you that we're going to train them to acquire skill set. 
okay and i'm talking about uh the uh abia state uh, abia polytechnic ABA, yeah. which uh, the current senator championed and uh, it's gotten it to appreciable level you know i'm saying that i will go a step further in assistance to what he has already done to upgrade that to, into an institution there's no reason to close abia state polytechnic let it stay there then we'll move what I propose to this current administration, create what I call University of Industry, Science and Technology. And it's not a state, it doesn't require state concurrence. It's a federal project that passes through NUC and uh, 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 give approval, then you, you set it up. It's going to be a federal institution, obviously state and the entire eastern region is highly entrepreneurial so they need to understand entrepreneurship development that's why it's entrepreneurship development industrial development in rest of industry science and technology where well, people are so enterprising let's give them the skill the basic skill set uh to to, to play. when you do that you are deepening the, our manufacturing culture the the genius in the Igbo man will be awakened and then we'll link them to the available development finance institutions which have 200 billion in central bank to promote entrepreneurship development small and medium enterprises and i've said that world over not just nigeria as a positive statement all developing economies must necessarily but i didn't say any other way must necessarily depend on small and medium enterprises and the informal sector okay that is the engine of growth in any economy so now you give them the basic school skill set to either state polytechnic and through university of industry science and technology then it's a revolution okay. all the youths will be employed all the youths will be trained they'll be gainfully employed mm -hmm. okay Okay, now let's talk about uh, the issue of that economic, uh, Inyimba economy city. I'm sure you must have heard it. Yeah. And uh, it's been championed by the state okay. government. Uh, they are said they are doing it in partnership with the federal government. What's your thought about that? Well, I know the Inyimba economic city, mm. uh, it is not being championed by the state government. It's a private sector driven initiative mm. by a great guy called uh, Mr. Dal Ozo, who has invested so much money. I've tell, told you before. Government should not engage in business. Government should provide a enabling environment. Mm -hmm. So in partnership with this uh, 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 promoter for Indian Economic uh, City, then you can now make it happen because government doesn't have the tools, but the promoters of Indian Economic City mm -hmm. have the tools to make it. I'm aware They've signed so many international agreements. They know what they're doing. I think it's just a matter of time. It will revolutionize Abia State and the entire southeastern Nigeria. I'm aware that the gentleman, uh, specifically Chief Dalozo, is a consumer entrepreneur. He has so many great ideas. But I know, as the senator representing Abia Central, I'm going to partner with him, OK? Partner with geometrics, partner with the moribund industries to get them going. The Indian economy city is a great product. The geometrics uh, power plant is a complementary, you know, partnership to economic development. So I'm going to support uh, the ex to the extent that I, you know, and ask him to please extend his uh, prowess. And entrepreneurship development to Abia Central, uh, so we can all create employment. So well, can rest if the if the use are restive, mm. then we're all going to be in serious. And the youths have been shortchanged over the years. The people who cast the most votes historically are women. The people who defend those votes are youths, and yet nobody has offered any concrete uh, proposal to lift them up. How many jobs can you create? But I want the youth to become gov 
job creators themselves, not job seekers. Okay, now uh, like, before we open the phone lines, uh, because we're going to do that, uh, but uh, I want us to talk about uh, the issue of uh, Abia Central politics. Mm -hmm. Abia Central politics now. Uh, I understand that uh, you have zoning kind of. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the zoning arrangement in that senatorial zone favors you to win this election uh, next month? Well, I would, I would go first to talk about a senatorial candidate to represent the Nigeria at the Senate. That is a primary consideration as to whom you send there. Does he have the ability to represent Nigeria? Does he have the quality, the contacts, the dignity, okay, integrity, and the know-how to represent Nigeria and the good people of Abia State? Also, I would think that qualification and experience will be the primary yardstick to elect you as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Probably and what you've <laughs> also done in the past. Exactly. I'm, I'm not going to be a stranger to the Senate. I know most of them there. I'm known all over the country. I'm known internationally. I'm known with the United uh, Nations Development Agency. I'm known by the ILO. These are partners I work with. I know people in FAO. So it's not a sick question of, I want to be a senator. What's your antecedent? What are you going to do? Do you even understand that the Senate is for very experienced people all over the world? The Senate is not for, you know, I'm not saying anybody is a rabble rouser. It's not an all-common affair. Look at the Senate, the quality of Senate all over the, all over the world. They're waiting for people like me with experience, both nationally and internationally. Now, coming to the zoning area, Mm -hmm. You know, maybe people should really understand what is happening. Abia State, Abia Central, I call them the uh, uh, most peaceful zone. Uh, is the heartbeat of Abia State. We don't want any problems within ourselves. So we've always done our things systematically. Mm -hmm. And before the English toting man calls in, they want to understand that the first senator in Abia Central was given to Abia uh, uh, Langwa South. And facts don't lie. It was represented by a senator, Bob Wando. Okay. That is from the Omon Nato extraction. Then the next senator was a great friend of mine, is Omaha South, Senator Chris Adeguije, an exceptional gentleman. Then he went back to an exceptional lady from Wissisioma, Senator Kichimog. It is now back to my good friend and brother, Senator T.A. Oji. So when he goes back to that side, remember that this year was South has taken their turn. Usisoma has taken their turn. It is now rightfully the turn of E.C. Alangwa North, where I come from, which prompted the one uh, highly rated gentleman called K.O. Maho. He said, I am the right person at the right time from the right place to go to the center. It is our turn, but before you lay emphasis on our turn, I'm talking about laying emphasis on who you are. What's the experience to represent the people? Okay, I understand you were at uh, Ikuano. Uh, that was last week uh -huh. where you spoke on the, the issue uh, when they held the socioeconomic summit. Uh -huh. What actually did you tell the people? And uh, do you think that they accepted whatever thing you must have told them actually vote for you yes i think so because i made them understand mm -hmm. that this is economics family economic program not promises not kick empowerment i talked about uh Iquano having been represented at the highest level by so many Iquano sons and daughters and yet Iquano ranks very 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 low behind the economic metrics behind family index they rank very low and infrastructure in Iquano is totally dead so what is the problem? It's just like my former organization, the NDE. When I was there, I told you about we're training 100,000 Nigerians every year. Mm -hmm. We told you about they're training 36,000 people on entrepreneurship and agriculture, 36,000 people in entrepreneurship in small and small. And then what I introduced, which is called special public works. OK? So I tell people. But it isn't the office that makes the man, it's the man that makes the office. So if you know 
there's no reason why there's a lack of infrastructure. There's no reason some of their roads are cut in half. Let me tell you something. I hear people talk about, I provide roads. I provide water. I provide power. I give you sustenance. So I build sustenance so for you. And I'm asking, why would people clap for you for doing what you're supposed to do? Building roads. If a government doesn't give you water, doesn't build your road, what are they there for? Those are normal. You take the, the, I buy a Mohikarabene road. I will build it. I mean, I will track the project. I'm not going to build it because it's subject to budgeting. Okay? And I know what to do. It is defied, you know, completion for over 20 years. But it's not something for me to, it is my duty. It's a primary duty for government to give you infrastructure. What I intend to do beyond that is to make sure the families are economically empowered. So people from Ibri Alala, from Ariyama Osaka, can access good road. If we do not take fund from, by the way, ecological fund has over a trillion naira that can check erosion. Mm -hmm. If we don't check erosion, uh, the next few years, uh, Ikuan will be gone. Okay, it is time for us to actually open the phone lines uh, so you can be part of this discussion. My guest has been Chief Chukwuachuku, the YPP senator candidate for Abu Central Senatorial Zone. He has said a lot as to his program for the people for Abu Central Senatorial Zone. It's time for us to actually open the phone line. You can be part of this discussion. Call us on 080-8182-6949 or 0811-605-2949. You can also send your SMS 090-65108-289. Please, no name calling. Just be civil in your submission hello good morning 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 okay um probably i should also remind you that uh, once you're calling move away from your radio set or better still turn down the volume on your radio set hello good morning the numbers are 08081826949 or 08116052949 can also send your sms 0906510829 289. We also have uh, the Facebook trade there running. You can go there and drop your message. Hello, good morning. Good morning. My name is Uche. Okay. I'm calling from Asia. Welcome, Uche. Go ahead. Hello, please. I've listened with very rapt attention. So, you get there. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to say that uh, it seems to be mixing two things up. The role of an executive, of the executive and that of the legislature. Some of the things that he says is going to bring to bear on his uh, constituency. He, to me, uh, the Nigerian type of politics are not just possible. <laughs> he says he was going to provide this, he was going to empower people, this one, the other. I don't see how that will happen then, finally. When he was the NDE DG director general, like uh, you introduced, what specific role did he play, you know, in empowering uh, uh, youth in Nigeria? Because we cannot see in very tiny term. I can't see anything that he did okay. for it. Let's so that was one of the uh, one of the well, let me not be too um, direct, but I, I didn't see much that the NDE. <laughs> okay, okay. Let him react to that. Let me answer that. Okay. So it is written that our people perish from lack of knowledge. Either he hasn't been listening. I did say that it is the platform of a senator that you can use to induce that. I did say from the beginning that primary objective or duty for legislators, as they have been deceiving people, is to make laws. But you forget that the senators sit over appropriation, we mean the budgeting, for which you know projects are put in. So why is Sir uh, Harfia not enjoying the benefits of representation? He should be asking himself that. Okay. Okay. And secondly, it's ignorant to say that you don't the largest NDE office in Nigeria is cited in Abia. And I've said we trained a hundred thousand Nigerians, youths. In skill set for you to even get jobs you have to have a skill set i did say that this hundred thousand nigerian including people from our after training them 
NDE empowered them with funding to set up businesses. Okay, let's take another call now. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. 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 Let us uh, stay on the issue. If you have any question, go ahead and add to uh, what you could. The numbers again are 80 or 08 Hello? Good morning. Hello? Hello, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Um, because I'm going to relax. What's your I name? I am in Lego. I'm going to be talking to you from now. Okay. So, in any Lego, I'm going to be talking to you from Lego. I'm going to be talking to you from Lego. I'm going to be talking to you from Lego. Whatever I Okay. Okay. Senator to be there, yeah? and the moderator. Good morning to you. Thank Welcome. You. Good morning. Yeah, I am God Abakuru. I am calling from Agent Ten before in Imo State. Okay. I always listen to a slow, uh, slow pro, uh, political and the uh, current issues. Mm. You know, I, I tune into this station almost all the time because of the way they handle issues affecting both politicians and the people alike. Thank you. In fact, I've, I've carefully listened to uh, honorable Chuku, not Chuku. Uh, going by his background, nobody should be involved that uh, he could make a good senator for his people. But let me ask you this question, and I want you to answer it right away before I continue. Uh -huh. Are you a politician? I'm, I'm not. I'm a technocrat, but we all need the political. <laughs> okay. We need the so, political. Okay, I've answered the question. I'm happy yeah. about it. So, I I believe you make some difference, you know, because why? As you know, politicians will come and yeah. talk, do do campaigns, mm -hmm. make up promises, but when they get there, you hardly see them with some of those things they talk about. Okay, thank you. Now that you are a, te a technocrat, I am seeing you as somebody who could make the difference. Thank you so much. And, I want, you, and I want you to mention that. So thank that, you. Thank you. Uh, thank by you. the time you finish your first turn, uh, the people will now have their confidence in you. As to okay, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Okay. Now, what's up? I'm going I'm the Obama. I'm more quick than that. <laughs> Obama. I think 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 I
Uh, the elder statement, I love your statement. Everything we need in Syria is somebody have the capacity to bring the different democracy back to home. Uh, okay. Not those Okay, I think uh, he has made his point. Yeah, Let's go point. over to our Facebook page. This one is coming from Odochi in Yina. He said, Deichuku has the capacity and integrity. Okay, thank you so much. Magnus Emmanuel Chigazuri said, Go ahead, bro. I love this. Nana voice of Ngwa Pali Mustit. Thank oh. you so much. Uh, okay, uh, Jaja Mantis King Jaja said, We are privileged to have the caliber of Chief Chuku Wachuku offer himself to serve our people, given the Western world. His life will be beckoned on to, uh, to come and lead. Good thing he has offered himself. We'll all support him. Thank you so much. Uh, Anya Mulainu said, uh, impressive. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Chief, we need to leave the studio. What's your final take as we exit the studio now? Well, I like uh, the comment from the man from uh, Emo State who listens uh, effectively you know, to you. Uh, often when people listen to people talk, they don't really understand what they're saying. I didn't say that. Uh, what I'm saying is a misnomer for any aspirant to, to the Senate to say his primary duty is lawmaker. Of course it is. But you have a, you sit over oversight of the budget. Okay? And it's in that budget that you see that projects that relate to your people are inserted there. It's not just inserted, but you have to make sure that the funds are released and the competent contractors handle those projects. I also want you to speak to the electorate as you go <coughs> into the uh, contest. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've offered to you mm. my primary cardinal point. You know, everything you do, you must take the family first. The family must eat. Okay. The family must be able to survive economically. I do not want you to come to my house to demand for money. I want you to create your own wealth. Thank you so much. Uh, the YPP senatorial candidate for Abia Central Senatorial Zone and former Director General, National Directorate for Employment, Chief Chuku Wachuku. Thank you so much for coming on the platform this Thank morning. you so much. And to all of you who called in and sent your messages, thank you so much. May God bless you. Sincere thanks to my producer, Samson Eze. Stanko, thank you so much. The guy behind the camera. My name is Ginika Oluwaha. We'll return again on Friday at 10 a.m. on the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. Till then, let's make Abia great. Good night.